Hi, my name is Kristen, and I live in the Upper West Side of Manhattan in New York City. According to my records at Hold International, I was born in Masan, South Korea, in early 1973, and thereafter was given up for adoption and made my way to Syracuse, New York, uh, in 1974, where I lived with my adoptive parents. I wanted to share a post that I posted on my Facebook page on Monday, September 14, 2009 at 11.04 a.m. Where do I even begin? I am on a plane heading to Tampa for a business trip and I'm thinking about the last few days. I recently completed an online application with Goal, a Korean agency whose mission is to support and assist the overseas Korean adoptee community. As a result, I received an email with a police report attached in Korean. I printed out the two pages a few days later and brought them to a dinner with fellow adoptees. As of late, I have been, I have been having dinner regularly with my Korean adoptee or KAD friends in Koreatown. K, a member of the CAD community for much longer than I, has been ever so helpful with teaching me how to cook and learn Korean. Kay took a shot at translating the pages and informed me that right below my name, Kyung Soon Pak, was the date, January 4, 1973. I took a look, and sure enough, the Korean sat right beneath the English numerals for 1973, comma, 1 and 4. My heart sunk. Clearly, that must be my birth date. Since I've only celebrated February 4, 1973 as my birth date, this date could have no other meaning for me but to indicate that in the best case scenario, carelessness by my Korean and or American handlers rewrote my history. I guess I should also mention that the police, that the police report also stated that I was left on the steps of a theater with a note, which has since gone missing. This news did not come as a surprise, rather it only served to reinforce my current beliefs that we, that I, was merely a, mod a commodity to be exchanged for cash with which Korea modernized and industrialized and now proudly boasts its strongest its strength as the 10th largest world economy. Babies exchanged for wealth and power. So now what? What do I do with this information? It being 2009, the first thing I did was to post a snarky comment on Facebook and replace my real birth date with the lie on the info page. And then I had the documents translated by two separate Korean-speaking volunteers who confirmed my suspicion. After walking home from Koreatown, over 68 blocks, I tried processing this news with my, first, with my mother first and then with M, an adoptee blogger from Athens who recently reunited with her birth family and is currently en route to Korea for her second visit. M understood. M felt every tear I shed on that long walk home. I didn't have to explain anything to her. The following day, I found myself dialing the phone number for Holt International. When the woman I emailed a few times was unavailable, I explained my situation and asked to speak with someone who could provide answers. S was the next voice to pick up the phone. After I told my story, S told me how to proceed, suggesting that D would be back in the office on Monday and could help me seek answers. S and I stayed on the phone for the next hour or so as I talked with him about my recent self-awareness. Like M, he understood. He too is an adoptee. He could identify completely with the struggles of self-actualization in later years and spoke of his desire to work with, within the existing system to effect change. His quiet nature and honest interest had a profound effect on me. It was as though I had been searching for, for him all my life, searching for all of them, searching for this community, for my community. I am no longer special or unique or different. Rather, I am part of an identifiable group with shared experiences, questions, fears, and sadness, much of which is internalized so we do not appear to be uh, so that we do not appear ungrateful or undeserving of our current circumstances. Our parents were taught to make us American children, no different from those born of locally white child, white parents. Colorblind and equal in my household, yet not equipped to understand that the world would not respond as my family does. I am here to say, no to shout, that I am not fully Korean, I am not fully American, and I am not fully a Jordan. I am a Korean, born of a woman and a man with stories which are part of me. Their lives are my histories, 
their lives are my history in the same way that my proud Irish, Greek, Italian, Puerto Rican, Jewish, and black friends revel in their common ancestors' achievements, physical characteristics, and commonalities. Too often, the only voice available is that of the adoptive family. Since the goal of adoption is a family for every child and not a child for every family, it is our voice, that of the adult adoptee, that should be the source of, for a, an accurate portrayal of the institution of adoption. We will not tell you the happy stories of love and acceptance. Instead, isolation, confusion, and profound sadness are the results of separation from our birth families. I recall the day as an elementary school t child when a classmate, did you think I would forget, called me pretending to be a fellow Korean adoptee from the orphanage. Oh, how excited I was as I ran to my mother to tell her who was on the phone. I remember holding the receiver close to my ear again, only to find a dial tone. I remember being called Ching Chong Charlie in slant eyes, my family being the UN of upstate New York. As adoptees, we learn to keep it all in. We do not tell these stories out loud. Love cannot overcome all and should not be used in lieu of actually acknowledging our past. In my case, I bore witness to my relinquishment as we all did, regardless of whether we have any conscious memory of it, and will carry that sadness with me forever. Pretending it did not happen, or worse, erasing events prior to, the arrival, to our arrival in the States, is it not fair for us or to our adoptive families? I had at least four caregivers before my first birthday who I will never remember and may never know. I feel that I would be failing my community if I did not ask my family and friends who are reading this note and sharing in my search for my identity to really think about the implications behind adoption. Psychologists and family counselors all agree that keeping the biological family intact is the best case scenario for all children, regardless of their status, ethnicity, religion, or wealth. Why does this not ring true for my community? Why do we re destroy families around the world instead of supporting them financially or otherwise? Why do we think that Asian children will thrive in entirely white communities with no Asian people, culture, food, etc.? Was God's master plan really to destroy four families to create my one family? Please do not misunderstand me. I would not change my life if I could. I am who I am today because of my birth mother, Uma, my birth father, Appa, the Masan police report that documented, documented my relinquishment, Adiwan Orphanage, which housed me, Holt Korea, who placed me with a foster family, Holt International, who shipped me to JFK Airport, and Janet and Clarence Jordan, who made me part of their family. I only ask that you attempt to understand international adoption, that you consider for a moment the events that took me and 200,000 other Koreans away from our homes and families, and the fathers and mothers who were convinced that if they really loved their children, they would send them away. Here we stand, 60 years after the first Korean child was sent abroad. Here we are, our hearts full and our voices strong. Please join me.